When it comes to the world of birds, they make for such good drawing subject matter, and that is because they are so varied in their shape, size, species, which provides us with a really rich and broad visual terrain to choose from in terms of drawing inspiration. And in today's tutorial, we will be looking at a very unique and fascinating bird that balances ominous qualities with beauty in a really delicate way, and that is the crow. And with that being said, hey guys, my name is Matt. Welcome to another video by artincontext.org, where we explore various art-related topics. And in today's tutorial, we will be looking at how to draw a crow with some colored pencils. Now, there are many ways to approach a drawing of a bird. However, in this particular tutorial, we will be looking at how to draw a crow with some very specific materials so we're going to be working with a, a simple graphite pencil some ballpoint pen some marker pens uh, some Derwent coloring pencils however you can use whatever materials you have accessible to you but with that being said we're going to get into the process and the thing about crows is that they're not necessarily just this black bird so a good suggestion is to look at some source inspiration on the internet to kind of assist you in your drawing process but the idea is we're going to learn how to use our colored pencils more specifically a range of blue pencils in tandem with some darker materials such as blacks um, and this is where we can use our pens um, and markers to kind of assist within the darker qualities but we'll find that there are these subtle hues of blue within our uh, crow sketch that kind of gives it a very beautiful um, shimmering uh, effect in terms of how light would kind of establish these shimmers on the surface area of its coat of feathers. So that being said, we're going to start with a simple sketch of the crow. And this is where we start by creating a light sketch of the crow by drawing the bird in its most basic shapes. So we want to draw in these oval triangular shapes that will then be refined later into more identifiable features. We will find that at this point we want to start lightly working on the features starting with the basic outline. So by doing this we can start to basically compare and work out the scale and the shape of the various features. We also want to start um, sketching the different segments of the feathers in the wings of the crow. However we are trying to keep it light but the idea is to kind of establish these basic features with a very light sketch. Crows have different size feathers as well so this is important to know which tend to be smaller in the upper areas of the bird and then kind of elongate at the bottom area of the bird. We want to think of it as if the feathers are stacked on top of one another as the longer feather will form from underneath the upper feathers. This makes the smaller feathers near the upper area of the wings seem as if they are stacked on the longer feathers and this idea is kind of to kind of establish this more realistic quality between how the feathers have these segmentations. So we can also start drawing in the legs which will have four digits. Um, however, you might not necessarily draw all the digits in the feet due to the perspective that the bird is drawn from in terms of what digits are actually visible or talons are actually visible on its feet. Um, but another thing to do is to just make sure that as you draw, you're looking at a reference image as you kind of go through this process. So consider looking at references on both the internet to assist you or maybe in a book or maybe uh, you've taken a picture of a crow. Um, but this can really assist you in terms of working out scale of different features. We also find that um, there are often areas uh, for some features that we might necessarily need to redraw. So the idea of this stage or this early step is to really take your time capturing the shape and form of the bird and really just trying to work with your razor as a tool to really establish the scale and position of various features as best you can. So yeah, just make sure that you are basically taking your time with the feathers especially as we want to make sure we capture the layers and the segmentations within the feathers as best we can. This is important because all birds have different feather compositions and in the case of a crow drawing we want to capture both the long and short feathers. Remember the feathers that sit on the upper section or are positioned near the upper section of the wings are much smaller uh, and almost have a scale like appearance similar to that of a snake or like a fish. Uh, so the mid area of feathers will extend from the bottom of those upper feathers which will also be longer in length. You will find that the process will take some time or should take some time during this early stage where we draw and erase marks until we capture them as accurately as possible but again use a reference from the internet to get a better sense of the length of the feathers however just make sure you keep your sketch quite light and this way as we basically integrate color we can use the sketch marks as a guideline without them necessarily overpowering the colored marks however just make sure that you also keep your sketch quite light and this way as we integrate color we can use the sketch marks as a guideline without them over overpowering the colored marks which brings us to the next step and that is adding some color and shading to the bird so we're going to start with the head area and we will now proceed to work mostly in the head area which flows into the underbelly section of the crow so we want to start incorporating some basic
base layers of color using a light blue pencil for now basically to start working in some color into the head area crows have a slightly blue hue to them again so this is predominantly a part of their larger black coat so we want to basically work from these lighter blue hues and then establish the darker colors eventually these uh, really black vivid colors as we layer darker marks on top in a drawing process you always want to work from lighter to darker tonal values and by doing so you have more control over how dark your image is so crows have a slightly blue hue to their predominantly black coats which becomes more prevalent in the sunlight and this is why we want to use these blues and these blue undertones to create that shimmery quality within the coats of feathers of our crow drawing to establish a more realistic representation of how it interacts with the light source so we don't necessarily need to color the bird completely rather we incorporate uh, the color through the process of adding some lines lines also establish a particular short feather like quality in the bird so this is just a nice little hack or nice Nice little drawing technique where you can basically use this quality of lines to maintain the textural aspects of the bird and that is the feathery qualities. The intention will be to create variation in tonal range which means we want to work in lighter layers and then be strategic with how we add darker layers with our pens and pencils uh, or pen and markers. We can add darker line work sparingly making sure we try to create darker and lighter moments in the head. Uh, we also want to start using or start adding some shading to the eye and the beak of the crow drawing. So we want to make sure that there is a highlight within the eye as well because this just represents the glassy aspect of the eye within the bird so try to maybe keep a negative space to represent that quality of a highlight or a reflection of light in the eye as we slowly layer in the lighter colors and then darker colors we can also play around with making some areas lighter and darker than others so the reason we do this is to also create more three-dimensionality and this way the bird is not necessarily a singular color or flat looking we do want to be obviously aware of the fact that this is still a three-dimensional structure um, or creature so we're trying to represent these uh, tonal variations in a way that emphasizes the three-dimensional qualities of the bird uh, once we start layering in line work with our pens as well we'll start to see how the bird becomes darker but retains the subtle blue hue that is present underneath so the idea is that these blue undertones are going to kind of peer through these darker marks that you make with your lines uh, we also want to make sure we have a significant highlight in the eye that's a really important feature as well as make the bottom half um, of the beak slightly darker to create again more realistic representation of how light is interacting with that feature the bottom half of the beak tends to always be darker due to the overshadowing so again that's just something important to note but as we proceed we're going to start adding color to the upper feathers in the wings so to keep color consistency we now want to use the same light blue pencil and color in the wing area to set a base of blue from here we will proceed in the same way where we build layers on top of one another from light lighter colors to darker colors. We can also darken the feathers in the leg area of the crow as this is normally a dark feature due to the overshadowing of the wings that are placed on top of the bird's body. Again it's really important for us to consider the direction from which the light source is coming from and if it is coming from the top generally the features beneath the bird or on its underbelly side will tend to be slightly darker. Um, using a darker blue pencil we can now start to draw in the feather details again starting from the top and working our way through to the bottom features of the crow drawing using your pencil sketching uh, to kind of assist you in adding color details so remember work within the lines or the pencil sketch and allow that sketch to assist you in adding color to your crow drawing so remember we want to build up um, our layers of color to work um, strategically in terms of determining various tonal values within our bird and this is particularly true for the wings because of its segmentations but otherwise now we're going to start adding some shading to the upper feathers in the wing so now that we have set a base layer of blue in the upper feathers of the wing we can proceed to do the same as we did for the head where we work in darker blues and black pen shading now again we're using ballpoint pen with uh, some colored pencils because this uh, medium works really well in tandem with pencil um, and that is because it really comes the ink comes out quite sparingly which gives us kind of a lot of agency over the mark making process similar to that of 
of a pencil. So the intention here is to be really cautious with our pen marks. We also don't want to necessarily overpower the color in the wings, but rather we want to emphasize the shadows and the form of the feathers. Uh, so we can lightly shade in between the feathers to bring more structure to the different segments within the feathers. Try to incorporate pen shading mostly on uh, the same of each uh, segment in the feathers so this way we keep shadowing mostly to one side the idea basically what is meant by this is that we want to maintain shadowing consistently on one side uh, within the various features um, opposite to that of the light source to give a more realistic effect in terms of how the structure interacts with the light source and that means all structures so all the little details the feathers in the wings um, the the shadowing under the beak wherever the light source is we want to keep our shadows on the opposite side and this does take time as it should uh, but the more time we spend on it the more realistic our crow drawing will um, be in the end uh, we also want to make sure we take our time with each segment of the feather slowly adding some blue shading and then going over that shading with some pen lines but the idea is to try to work on the upper feathers before moving to the lower sections of the feathers and we work our way down once you have established all the layers you can then start darkening areas of the wings as you choose uh, we can do this if we feel that the bird should be a little darker and less blue um, however we want to make sure that the bird is not necessarily too blue but only has these red subtle hues of blue and again this is why it's really good to work from lighter tonal values to darker ones especially for a very dark subject matter like a crow that is predominantly black or it's seemingly black uh, and this is because we can establish those very uh, light subtle hues underneath and then darken them with a darker medium in this case some pen and marker um, but it is good to slightly layer more pen shading over the wings once you have completed the layers of color And this way you can manage how dark you would like the bird to be with darker layers of black shading But then we're going to move on to adding color and shading to the lower uh, Wing feathers so now that we understand the basic process of filling in the wings with blue coloration as a first set of layer uh, or layers so lighter blues and maybe darker blues and then shading over that layer we can then proceed to do so in the feathers at the lower section of the wings again try to work with different blues both lighter and darker blues this way we create more variation and nuance to the coloration within the feathers not necessarily having them look flat um, and then work in blues as a base layer so you want to make sure you build up from your lighter blues once again to your darker blues and then ultimately enhance them with some pen shading you can try to consider the incorporation of darker pen shading and how it can emphasize shadows without overpowering the blues and this is really important again we're not trying to just color over the blues and then it be kind of uh, redundant um, the idea is to kind of integrate this pen shading in a way that is predominantly dark but then we are leaving some negative spaces that allow the blue to kind of um, surface um, or kind of appear through our pen shading so we want to really um, take our time and slowly work in pen shading and this way we can stop without making it too dark but otherwise we want to make sure we work on adding these layers into the lower feathers that create a tail like feature in the bottom wing section again take your time with coloring in the different feathers and take your time and if you feel yourself also getting fatigued remember this is a drawing it's not necessarily a project this is for fun take a break the intention is to create a beautiful realistic drawing and we can't necessarily necessarily do that when we feel tired and fatigued and can't concentrate on the drawing process. You want to enjoy it so take a break when you need to and that's just an important reminder. We also want to think about how the feathers sit on top of other feathers and how this will create shadows on the feathers beneath them. So this is where as we have colored and shaded the different areas of the wings we can then slowly darken areas in the wings that might need more shading in particular the areas where we see these overlapping qualities. But other than that guys we're going to move on to the last aspects of the drawing and that's where we contextualize the crow drawing so once we have drawn the entire body we then can contextualize the crow uh, with a fun little feature in the sense that we are gonna draw the legs and feet um, and then necessarily maybe place uh, a stick like structure underneath the bird to uh, define it within an actual environment or space and not necessarily um, make it look as if it's floating in a void we're not w uh, worrying too much about drawing some elaborate environment around our bird that's not the tutorial 
at hand but it is good to contextualize your bird drawing to kind of give it um, some sort of placement in a space you can play around with how you draw in the digits as well on the feet as all four might not be visible depending on the perspective from which you are drawing the bird um, we can also draw in a branch to give some sort of environment in which the bird will be placed and you can draw in a branch in a similar process of layering in terms of how we actually drew the bird where you establish the sketch you establish base layers of color and you enhance them with some darker features but otherwise guys take your time with the feet and the contextualizing aspects such as the branch or whatever you're drawing your bird placed on and there you have it an easy and beautiful realistic crow drawing a simple um, done with a very few set of steps um, but otherwise guys the key concepts to take away uh, is first of all take your time remember you do want to make sure you take your time on all these uh, aspects especially the early sketch you want to make sure you establish the shape and form of the various features from there you want to really work with lighter uh, tonal values first so lighter marks especially with the coloration of the bird where you work in these lighter blues and then you can slowly enhance these features with some darker colorations of blue and then ultimately some darker materials maybe like pen or marker um, you also want to use line work to your advantage line work is a great way to create the quality of um, feathers within your bird drawing so this is just a great way to kind of keep the textural qualities of the bird whilst you are simultaneously enhancing it with shading uh, to give it more three-dimensionality and then lastly just have fun with it enjoy the process use this as you as you would like to as just a reference or a guide in terms of how you can approach a drawing of a crow and other birds uh, bird drawings do kind of follow a similar process uh, so this is just a resource but otherwise guys if you are interested in similar or related topics whether it is within the genre of bird drawing we would love to hear from you in the comment section below so please do comment and let us know um, and if you found this video helpful please do show us by liking and subscribing showing us some love in that way helps us to grow the channel which ultimately enables us to just make more fun and interesting art related content which we love to do um, and we love to share that with you guys so please do help us by supporting us by liking and subscribing and otherwise I will see you in the next video that is it from me today until then cheers